go a little bit deeper. Oh God, we want you today, God. We want you today, God. The Rabo Shikaba Rakumikas is something for the baby. Come here, baby. Karosha Baba Nevekise. Oh, Barak Nevekise. You are about to walk and hear me a season of favor, says the Lord. Even with this new thing that you are walking into, this, this is a glow upon you that, hear me, I, I see head people are going to recognize something different about you. Come here, because it's for you too, baby. There's something to this hold your mom in. That there's a supernatural favor coming on your household. There's about to be something. I hear God say some, some changes taking place. There's some things and some battles that you've both been fighting. Hear me. That God said today is the day. Hear me. That you hear me. You discover victory this afternoon. Don't you leave this atmosphere word about another thing. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, because there's some stuff that's coming up even upon the ego. It's all right, because there's some things coming up in you, family. The God wants to do some things in you. Hear me. There's even, hear me, there's an anointing upon you for young women. I see God using you to minister to young women, young girls. There's a, there's, hear me, there's an anointing of attraction coming up on you, says the Lord. There's so much that God has planned for you. Don't you try again to fit in when God has called you to fit out. Don't you try again. Don't you try again to fit in to no more circles. No, no more proofs. No more, no, you know what I mean? Today is the day of extinction. You hear me? You are marked to be different. You are marked to be different. Come on. You are, I'm telling you, y'all, you are marked to be different. I'm say it again. You are marked to be different. Says the Lord in the name of Jesus. You guys have you guys an inter on. internal pain. And I just see you guys holding each other. There's some internal pain. And God said he's healing both of y'all from some internal pain. He said the pain that tried to take over your mind. He said I'm releasing my peace. He said I'm releasing my spirit to minister to each and one of your spirit. I need to see you holding up your mind and just covering her and holding her up and encouraging her. But God said, he's coming today to encourage you. He's coming today to uphold you. He's coming today to strengthen you. He said, because you've been through it. And God said, you, it, you don't look like what you've been through. But God said, I see your heart. And he said, for this, I'm setting you free. He said, I'm setting you free from anything that was contrary to me. He said, any hurt and pain that was contrary to me, I'm releasing you from it. And release your praise right now. Your freedom, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on and lift up a praise. Thank you. 
of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Read that one more time. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Amen. This is the Psalms 84, verse 2. Psalm 84, verse 2. Thank you, Brother Joyce. Go ahead, dear. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the course of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. So number five, number five is, after we develop a, a spirit of dependency on the presence of God, it should shift us to now have a spirit of desperation for the presence of God. So number five is talk about desperation. What does the word desperate or desperation mean? It means a state in which a great need for something or someone. It's a longing or a yearning for something. So when you're desperate, you have a great need for something or someone. So now that we move past depending on him, God is saying, now I need you to, to develop, hear me, a spirit of desperation. Hear me, this should be a spirit of desperation that we carry. So our desperation is like few to our fire for the presence of God. Without a few, a fire cannot continually, what y'all, burn. So if the desire is like our fire, the desperation is like few to the fire. Many of us in the body of Christ don't encounter God because our desperation is lost. When have you ever been desperate for something? Hear me, you'll do anything and everything, Kyle, to find out or find that thing because you are what y'all desperate for. And God is challenging G2G International to become a church. Hear me, that, that's getting back to being desperate for him. I know you desire him. I know you have developed a hunger. I know you are drawing toward the presence of God. I know you have a dependency. But it's something that God is speaking to us that we should develop a spirit of desperation. We should go after him like it's our last time. Yes. His presence means so much to us that without it, we are absolutely nothing. Come on. Yes. But God is saying that our desperation is like fuel. So I don't care how you put it, you can have the best fire, but if you don't put no fuel on it, that fire is going to go out because at any moment. And God is saying this afternoon to us. 
who you have a desire. Your passion is there. Your fire is there. But if you don't get the feel of desperation soon and very soon, that desire of the presence of God is going to begin to do what y'all deflate. It's going to begin to what? go lower and lower and lower and lower. You know how it is. Some of y'all have power shoes. They got the fire going, but they put that lighter fluid on it. That lighter fluid has the ability within itself to make that fire go a little more higher. So that's why here me in this season, God is challenging us all also not just to be people of desperation. Watch it now, but you got to start hanging around people that are desperate for God. Why are you going to waste time, hear me, valuable time around people that don't got the same value system when it comes to the presence of God like you? For the remainder of the year, I hate it, maybe your family. Maybe your cousin, maybe your mama, maybe your daddy. But you got to be around people that are rub off shoulders. Because when I get desperate for God, I don't want to be around you. But I, mean, I just want to encounter God. And you looking at me like, man, this ain't Sunday. See, see, desperation moves past Sunday services. See, see, desperation moves past Bible study night. Desperation is a lifestyle. Yes. When you got a lifestyle of desperation, so you got to understand that when God made Adam, he gave him the spirit. He gave him the breath. Soon as Adam and Eve messed up, that very thing that was causing him to breathe had now left. So if you really sum up the whole Bible, what was God trying to do? Man was so desperate for him, but because they, they, him, they had that breath inside him once again, and God was trying through the New Testament, allow man, hear me, to have that breath not on them, but breath what y'all in them. So desperation, hear me, is a necessity if you're going to continue to have a desire for the presence of the Lord. You can't have a desire, you need desperation. And I'm talking about when we get to the level, y'all, where no matter who's biased, no matter who's around you, I am desperate, and I want to be desperate. This is my last time. Yeah, yeah. Experience or hear me, or encountering the presence of God. Go ahead. This is deep. I like this part. Long. Go back, man. For a long Watch game. the scripture. This is deep. Let's go to that scripture. Go ahead. It might be, uh, go to the next one, dog. Right there. Go ahead, man. So as you can see in the scripture here, my soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. If we take a look at long, it's our desperation that should be a continued yearning. We should continually yearn for the presence of God. When I think of somebody desperate, it's always in a negative, like that person will do whatever it takes to get somebody's attention. How many of you want to do whatever it takes to get God's attention and make sure he stays in the room? We want to be so desperate that we will do whatever it takes. We will cut off whoever we need to cut off. We will cut the TV off, whatever we need to do. We will put the plate away if we need to, all to get into the presence of God. So it's important that we long for him in our desperation as we are desperate for the presence of God. And if you see the word long, it doesn't use, it don't use it one time. So it's letting you know that this desperation is not a one-time thing. Right. Mm -hmm. He said longs. Longs mean what you're plural. So there is multiple times that God would allow, hear me, that desperation. What he'll do, Mickey, he'll take himself from you to see if you're going to be desperate for him. But I like it, it says, what y'all what? For my soul long. So my soul, which is the cycle, which is another word for mind, my mind or my whole being, this is not a one-time thing. So you may have been desperate for him when you first got saved. But this declaration that God is calling us to is not a one-time thing. It's a plural thing, which moves me to the next part. Watch it. And yes, even the faints. Uh, it's another part. Go back, daughter. It's the right translation. Uh, it says, go back, baby. Go, go, go back, go back. Here we go. All your cares about the streams. Do you see the word choice streams with the S? So the plural. So it's letting you know once again. There are different manifestations of the presence of God as we encounter Him. What am I saying? There will be different seasons when God will manifest His presence at another level based off the different longings which is connected to the different streams. If he said stream, that means, cousin Cena, that the presence of God or the thirst of God would have came through one way. But he said streams because there are multiple levels. And hear me, there are multiple dimensions. When God would say, now, hear me, you're good at this level, but I'm about to put a deeper desperation in you. And now, hear me, and that's why sometimes, hear me, watch this now, who you used to 
used to listen to when it came to the word, now you put them on, you be like, man, is that the same person? Because what's happening is God has put a desperation for deeper in your spirit. So the very thing, Jimmy, that satisfied you back in the days is not the very things that can satisfy you today because God is putting a spirit of desperation. What you mean, Pastor? He's saying, I'm calling out to the deep and I want to pull you past that religious chunk, past that surface stuff, and I want to know you and I want to know you real good. It's time out! And he's calling for desperation. Different streams. And that's why I teach y'all here, it's important to have your senses activated. Because, because just like in the natural, you have five senses. You have five senses in the spirit. Touch, what else? Taste, hear, what else? Five senses. And we remember we went through that teaching. Because at different levels, there are different streams based off different senses. And if you have not trained him, your taste bud, yeah. then God may send a stream through your taste bud. How do you think the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good? Taste and see that the Lord is good. How do you think he said very clearly that he didn't have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? It was not talking about a physical concept of an ear, but it was talking about waking up your spiritual senses. Watch this now. Do you understand that many of us in the body of Christ, we miss God because of our senses have not been activated. It's just like Carl, back in the days, baby, we had the old next cell phone. It don't matter if they sent it to you. If you didn't call to activate that phone, then you got a new phone sitting there, hear me, that's ready to work, but you didn't activate it so that it started working. What is Pastor saying this afternoon? That baby, God will begin to send some strings of his manifested presence. God begin to, he said, you may say this, my God, it was good in that season, but in this season, you need some more love. So what I will do is, I will send a stream of love down your block. No, I don't need love. I need peace, Lizette. And God said, don't worry about it. I got a stream of peace that I come down knocking. You may say, man, power be destroying me. But prosperity is coming down my way. Because God has an interesting way of sending different streams so that you can encounter his presence. Now somebody say, God.
desperation. Amen. Amen. Let's look at uh, verse 2. As you look at that, it says, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go meet with God? Do you hear that waiting, that wanting, that longing? Our desperation will cause us to wait for an encounter with his presence. Many times we'll go into his presence and if we don't feel him right away, we don't think he's there and we might get up from our prayer, our prayer closet. But God is saying, where are my desperate people that will wait and wait and wait and seek and wait until I find them standing right there. So God is longing us for just like the deer is desperate and they will wait. We need to wait on God. Say, I will wait, I will wait on, God. on God. Amen. So you can't rush desperation. Yeah. Mm. You can't rush it. Yes. And one thing about a deer, they know when the water temperature is set right. As a deer pan up by the waters, show set my soul. Somebody say, God, give me a spirit of desperation. God, give me a spirit of desperation for your presence. For your presence. Y'all ready? Number six. All right, let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. Go ahead. But I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. All right, next one. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. All right, so the next key, number six, is discipline our flesh to encounter the presence of God. Discipline. All right, and let's look at the definition of discipline. It is a trait of being well-behaved, training to improve strength or self-control, punish in order to gain control or enforce obedience. Wow, discipline will cause us to starve our flesh and feed our spirit with the presence of God. So when we are disciplined, we have to train ourselves to be Discipline in his in in, in 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 seeking his face and going into his presence. You know, also we have the desperation, but in order to have the desperation, we must be disciplined in that area. Okay, and we also need to uh, uh, punish our flesh. Okay, so punish is, is it's it's a good thing when it comes to our flesh in order for us to gain control over our flesh. Okay, so discipline will cause us to um, you know. Uh, be upright before the Lord and, 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 and claim before the Lord. We have to train our flesh to be submissive to the Lord and when we're in his presence and when we're reading his word. Amen. Also, it says it, it, it will cause us to starve our flesh. Mm -hmm. yes. And it it's not very deep. Whatever you feed the most, won't win. Right. It ain't that deep. It's just true. If you feed your flesh more, you will see the fruit of flesh. If you feed your spirit more, you will see the fruit of your money in your spirit. But what discipline does between flesh and spirit, it, it causes us to, to improve self-control. So those times our flesh want to rise, discipline will shut it. Now, if we're going to encounter the presence of God, discipline is important. There's no flesh or what glory in his what? God, we, so we, as believers, God is calling us to discipline ourselves. But, but, but and I do believe sometimes that the church, globally, gets so gifted that we neglect discipline. Because if crowds responding, we don't hear it. We don't have, it's like we have, we, we don't have that, that inner or that secret discipline. And I believe that is an area that, that, that I believe all of us need to develop day after day is a discipline. Because your flesh will talk. Your flesh will talk. Amen? Amen. But if we train our flesh, so, so what we have to do in order for us to stay our desperation, in order for us to stay dependent in windy, in order for us to stay drawing and develop and desire, we got to discipline. So that means sometime we got to starve that flesh. Yeah. That's why this fast? Absolutely. We want you to starve it. 
We can't teach about you encountering his presence and don't give you the disciplinary tools to teach you how to do it. <laughs> Hear me, I told you last week, if you get his presence, you got everything. Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. But as my wife said earlier, we don't want to wait for it because we are a microwave generation. If you don't come in two seconds, we get off your knees. We're trying to teach you that this thing ain't just a neat thing. It's a, I mean, you can, this is that every day, it should be your lifestyle, is to encounter the presence of the Lord. Remember we talked last week about the dependency, about your breath. Prime example, when God blew his breath into Adam, Adam had a dependency on that breath. As soon as it left, it's like his dependency left. All right? So all this is powerful right here. Discipline will cause us to punish our flesh that we may gain control over. This flesh is dirty. This flesh is out cold. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. This flesh has robbed all of us out of the blessing of the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. I know some of it's the devil, but some of it's just who, y'all? Us. us. As believers, us. Yeah? I mean, we talked about, remember, delivering me from this relationship. Yes. Ooh, that service still rain, right? Come out that door. You feel what I'm saying? But he said, discipline. Let's not focus trying to be everything. Let's just ask God, Lord, in this season, help me with being disciplined with my flesh. Yeah. And I know you're like, man, I, what? It, it got to be a continual thing, though. Yeah. God, and, it's, and I like it because, Pastor, if we do that, discipline is like a hammer to our flesh. It punishes. Yeah. Me, think about it. If somebody hurts you. The normal thing is you want to hurt them. I know we all say, but somebody hurt your family, believe me, you're going to want to do something to them. Somebody say amen. Amen. You feel me? So that flesh has done something to you. You don't want to hurt him back or she back? <laughs> How do you hurt him or he? All that. You punish it by discipline, by the word of God. Yes. That flesh going to win it, you're going to lose this week. I'm going to punish you. How I'm going to punish I'm going to discipline myself. And while we discipline ourselves, it helps us with the choice to gain control. Right. Yeah. God is calling us in this season so that we may be people that can control. That's why one of the fruit of the Spirit is what, y'all? Self-control. Self-control. Self he didn't say control your neighbor. He said self. self. Yes. You know, some church for all trying to I'm not just controlling. No, no, no. Control you. <laughs> self what, y'all? So in order for us to receive the benefits of his presence, we have to train our flesh to be crucified. That's a daily thing that we must, must do in order to see the revealed manifestation of God in our lives on a regular basis is to put our flesh in submission and crucify, kill that thing. Okay. I'm just gonna crucify what y'all daily. Yeah. So if I'm crucified daily, I when I'm doing this, then I'm empowering my discipline daily. Mm -hmm. Got me? And I won't fall into you know the, the temptations that the enemy may bring my way, or fall into the snares of the enemy, and and, and you know I will continue to you know live it upright, which I believe we all can, but it takes these keys in order for us to do so. Okay. All right, so somebody said discipline our flesh to encounter the presence of God. Discipline our flesh to encounter All right, number seven, we move on right ahead. Go ahead, Michael Britt, thank you, sir. Number seven. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. <laughs> Go ahead. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud will come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshiped, each at the entrance to their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Scripture, Jeremiah 33 and 3. This is good. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. That you what? You do, you do not know. know. Number seven. After you discipline yourself, God is calling us to have dialogue in his presence. Do you see when Moses went to the tabernacle, to the tent, 
The Bible says, Nikki, that God spoke to him face to face yes. like a friend. Because the presence of God, hear me, it, 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 and what is dialogue? It's a deal. It's a, 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 a conversation between two parties. I like this. It's a discussion intended to produce an agreement. Ooh, that's good. It's a discussion intended to produce an agreement. How the two walk together unless they what? Agree. How can we be synchronized unless our flesh and our body agree with him? So God is saying that I'm just not calling you to be desperate. I'm not just calling you to have discipline. But I'm going to create some dialogue when I come. What are you saying, Pastor? Number one, it's God's intention to create dialogue in his presence. It's his, his intention to create dialogue. Hear, hear me. When God comes, he's coming to have dialogue. When you see God manifesting himself, we see Moses. Look what it says here. I call to him, and he does what, y'all? Answer. Answer. That means there's a dialogue, which means when you come in my presence, you're not the only one that got something to say, Carl. Right. But when you come into my presence, I have the ability, if you let me, hear me, tell you great and unsearchable. Yeah. Um, he said, there's some things I want to tell you that Ooh. you can't even search for. Yes. Do you really understand that? He said, there's some things that I'm going to break off your family that your family cannot even search for because I hid it because they didn't have a desperation. They didn't have a desire. But here you come like an Esther. What you mean? Pulling at the time like this. And what does God say? Now I can uncover what's been hidden. So God is saying that this dialogue that I want to talk, yeah, I want to show you some stuff. I want to tell you some stuff that you do not know. Yes. Do you understand that dialogue it's not just God speaking to you or you speaking to God. It's dialogue between two different people. And I like it because it says to our family that, hey, all of it is to produce an agreement. So when God's presence comes, what he's trying to do, Nikki, Miss Whitney, he's trying to allow us to come in agreement with the will of God. And what happens is because we don't know how to discern the presence of the Lord. So when he comes, we miss the dialogue. And, the, and you missing the dialogue forfeited God telling you unsearchable things. Because we can discern a gift, but we cannot discern his presence. Mm. I'm talking about the authentic, authentic presence of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, see, and, and, and gifts are phenomenal. Y'all some gifted people. But I, I want to just charge you. Your gift will never outweigh the presence of the Lord. Yeah. It will never. I, I don't take your prophesy with accuracy. I don't think you lay hands and catch you about a body. It's the presence of the Lord that makes the difference because he gave us the presence, so there's dialogue. Well, let's go back. I'm going to read this one time. Go back to verse 8. I want you to see how Moses still talk. They were talking like they were just cool, cuz. Watch. Go ahead, Mike. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, uh -huh. all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until they entered. They watched him. They said, maybe we have dialogue, man. <laughs> Huh? Now this is deep. I can teach leadership right here. How many of you, and I'm just, if I'm not your leaders, just in general, how many of you pay attention to leaders that don't have dialogue? See, that's, that's, a, that's a small secret. And I, like, and I like it because Nikki, they watched him not by what was about to happen, but they paid attention to the dialogue Moses and knew was about to happen. Yeah. Watch this. Oh, go ahead, sir. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the, the presence entrance. of the Lord. Will stay at the what, y'all? Entrance. Entrance. Mm. So that's the presence of God. Moses came. Presence of God came. Watch what happens. While the Lord spoke with Moses, the Lord about, spoke with who? Moses. Moses. He's speaking to Moses. First, his presence came. Then conversation came. He read. Think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Now that's funny. I, I've been reading TV. He's actually having a conversation. He's that time with his presence. He's spoken. We speak about the evil desires. Because he knows them are the very things that can capture us and get us neglecting the presence of God. Go ahead. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshiped. Now this is powerful. They weren't even included in the dialogue, they still worship. Because the powerful thing is from a leadership standpoint is 
if your pastor or your leaders can have dialogue, that means that hey, you're going to hear what him and God said. Mm -hmm. How did y'all talk about this? You just missed it. They were not even concerned about the dialogue. No. Because they understood that Moses was a representation of the dialogue. Yes. Yes. Their job was to worship. Break it down. Why are you worshiping? Because my father or my leader has an ability to dialogue with God. What you say? How that prophecy just happened? Because me and Pastor had what? Dialogue with God. And because we had dialogue with God, some of you had dialogue with you. And at the end of the sermon, I'm bringing some more people that God wants to speak to and it's coming because what? We have dialogue with God. What you say, man? R repeat that. <laughs> and he said something. I was sharing downstairs with my son. And he said something so profound, but it was so plain, man. But, but, but it was so much weightiness to it. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, I got that. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Whenever the people saw the what, y'all? Pillar. Yeah. Or saw the presence of the Lord. Standing where? Entrance. Because they knew their leader was going to the what? Entrance. Watch this. They all they all said they did what y'all? Worship. Worship. Each at the what? Entrance. Of the tip. Each one had their own tip, girl. But when they saw the glory come, they said Moses is about to talk to him. <laughs> and Moses talking to him, then that means you're gonna hear to give up the help. Hear me. And that's why it's a benefit that continue to pray. That your leaders have dialogue. Yeah. Hear me. It's different than conversation. Yeah. Mm, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Next one, y'all. Verse 11. Watch this. What does that mean? The Lord, what, y'all? To speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. That's deep. That Moses had the ability. That's talking about me. I'm, I'm going to look at your face. Can you look at my Y'all feel me? He, he, he said that relationship, the dialogue was so good, it was like this. Do you understand that? Mm. Wow. He didn't say Jesus. wealthy well, it was backwards. He said that Moses had a yes. relationship. His desperation pulled him, not on the outskirts, but it pulled him right in my face. Mm. Wow. That means if I get in my right face, I can say secrets that you would never hear. Mm. Come on, come on. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean? That's good. That's good. Because That's good. That's good. That, that dialogue. It's intimate. Intimate, yes. 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 You'll catch it. That dialogue ain't got nothing to do with you. Yes. So there's some stuff that yes. God I can tell her about me and her, uh -huh. but there's some stuff that God can tell us is for y'all. Uh -huh. That's why it's some stuff that we haven't released yet because the dialogue was between us two and who? No. Right. Right. That's good. Because Moses, because this is powerful, they were face to face. face to be face. like what? Friends. Friends. Now let me drop some more. Did it say face to face like a servant? No. No. This is all for better teaching. Let me just help you guys. It said face to face like a what? Friend. I know the church taught you be a servant of the Lord. Hear me. You should. But if you read the Bible correctly, God created sons, not servants. Yes. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. You get it. You must watch this. He told the disciples, I no longer call you what? Servants, yeah. but I call you friends because I only tell my friends secrets. Yeah. Yeah. So Moses had a servant heart, but he was a friend of God. So what am I saying? That baby, there's a time in our walk with God that God will shift you from being a servant. What you mean, Pastor? If me and Mama are kings and queens, praise the Lord. Yeah. And you and I, you are a servant of mine. You will stand out the door. Uh -huh. Mama, he would totally miss the conversation that was done. Why? Because he was just being a servant. Yes. Is he doing good? Yes. But there comes a point in time when you teach kingdom, when God say, keep your servant heart now, but I want to I wanna pull you up too, so you can be a part of the conversation. Hear me. Hear me. Friends are invited to be part of the conversation. Mm. Friends. You might say, well, what about the scripture at the end? Well, you have done a faithful servant. Read the context. Yes. Stand servant from your heart. 
Because you know, some people serve, they ain't got to hire, but you serve because you're leaving around. That's another story we talk about leadership, hallelujah. But when you really serve them, you need nobody to tell you you did a good job. You need nobody, you need nobody pumping in your back. I know you like, I, I've been there. But you don't, you don't, you don't need it every time. But he said, Kyle, we got to keep going, man. As one speaks to a friend. friend. Yeah. I like it, yeah. One speaks to his yeah. Now, I feel it's very tough. Some of y'all got, you gave the title friends, hear me today, oh. to some people uh -uh. that couldn't care. Mm -hmm. No. And watch this now. You get hurt because they hurt you. Yeah. You yeah. gave them the authority. By yeah. giving them the name or the title, what? Yeah. Friends. Come on now. What if God? What, what if we taught back in the days when we when we was in elementary school how to pick your friends? Yeah. I don't care how you put it. Your friends are a determination of your future. That's right. And Jesus understood that. But Moses had a good relationship because he spoke face to face. So there was a dialogue, and I believe Moses was sharing his heart. God was sharing his heart. And God was sharing his heart. Nikki Moses was sharing his heart. But all of it had one, one focus. Is that Moses and God would be in agreement. Yes. Mm. Moses and God would be what y'all? In agreement. In agreement. <laughs> Let's keep rolling. <laughs> this is about to be good, good, good. Jesus. All right, so his presence is the meeting place for us to become synchronized with him. So every time we get in his presence, that's the meeting place. Yes. Back in the garden, that our heart is the garden to become synchronized with him. Just like with Moses, he met him in different places. He yes. met him on the mountaintop. He met him in the tent. But he met Jesus so that he can become synchronized with him. And as we synchronize with the Father, there comes a dialogue with him where he begins to reveal those secrets and we be begin to reveal the heart and the heart of the church as we dialogue with him. Also, um, the manifestation of his presence is a sign that he wants us that he wants to speak. Okay, so when we feel his presence, we know, okay, God is here. What do you want to say? God wants to speak. Sometimes we do all the talking and God saying, be quiet. I got some secrets to tell you. I got some things that will get you delivered and set free out of that rut you've been in for years. But if you would just be quiet, I can allow my stuff to speak face to face to you. So in order for us to allow him to manifest himself by speaking, we must also allow him to, we must be silent so that he can speak. And that's, and that's what I'm going to be teaching next quarter. The church will be a lot different. Yeah. We want to be able to teach y'all this thing. Why don't hear nothing? Because if he comes like he came today, did he have dialogue? Yes. Yeah. Because his presence is a sign Look what it says. And they saw the cloud. They saw the cloud. Because that was a sign that he about to speak to my people. Yes. Mm. Yes. So number number seven is what y'all? Dialogue in his presence. Oh, we almost done. Let's go to number eight. Okay. All right. Wait, wait. That's scripture. Go ahead, my people. Call to me, and I will answer you. And tell you great and unsuspected. Psalms 139, 7, brother. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. <laughs> Next one. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. All right, so key number eight is daily. Daily encounter with the presence of God. Let's take a look at the definition of daily. It means every day. Without missing a day. So every day, without missing a day, we should have that dialogue. We should have that desperation every day. Um, God's heartbeat is to have a natural encounter, a supernatural encounter with us every single day. Um, wherever we are, whether we're in the car, whether we're at home, on our job, we can always encounter his presence. It doesn't take us being loud. It doesn't take us, you know, having being obvious that we're praying to God. It's just a dialogue, us talking. Just like you talk normal to a person face to face, that's, that's what God wants, that dialogue. But daily encounter, we can have 
have his presence every single day. Just as daily breathing, as you saw in the scripture, the nostrils, the breath of God, just as that, that's important to a human body, new encounters with his presence are important to the spirit of man, okay? So it's so important, just like we breathe every day in and out, it's a natural thing. Our lungs need that air to go in in order for us to breathe and to live. We need his presence every day in order for our spirit to live. Amen? Think about it, y'all. If you don't breathe daily, you don't live. So breath is a sign of living and life. So just as important as your daily breath is to your human body, Nikki, it's just as important as his presence is to our spirit body. The breath which you breathe every day allows your natural man to live. But the presence of God, which is the ruach, or the breath of God, allows your spirit man to live. Yes. So just like you need your natural breath daily, it's just like you need your spiritual breath, what y'all? Daily. So that's why every day we can encounter him. Why? Because every day you're breathing. Are y'all catching that? Yes. Are you catching that? Yes. That you can have daily encounters with the presence of God. Yes. As soon as you stop breathing, is a sign that you stop living. Yes. Same way with the spiritual component. As soon as we stop hearing, uh, desiring and developing and desperating for Him, what's going to happen is, family, y'all, our spiritual man is going to die. And many of us die in a place. That God is trying to make live. We as the believers got to understand by discernment, just like I need natural breath, I need it. See, see, when you understand that, that right there gives you another level of desperation. Yes. Mm. Pray for me, I have one of my closest friends. I've been knowing since I was seven. His mom was like mom. Other day she went home to be with the Lord. And to be honest, he kind of crushed me. Because he called me and said, man, I'm good. I said, let me tell you something to be honest with you. I said, you ain't good. You not, no, you're not. I said, you lying, bro. Now, this is my friend. You ever like, how you going to tell me? He's my friend, 39. He's been my friend since I was about 30. And I was about 30, about, about 9, 8 years old. He's been a friend a long time. He's my a phenomenal brother. I've been over his house. I'm a family. I'm going to carry the rest of the for now. But they took her off, Miss. They, Miss Winnie, they took her off the system. And as soon as they took her off, life did like this, mama. It wasn't, it, it, it happened just like this. So we should take the same approach. Just like natural breath is important, I provoke you. His spirit, his presence is just important in your daily life. Walk with him. Daily encounters with his presence <coughs> helps keep the heart moist for receiving the word. Daily encounters for him soften up your heart or soften up your ground. Yeah. Because you can't be in his presence like that and then allow his presence choice to work on the softness of our hearts. Yeah. If we as a church and God begin to do what he has to do, if we come in here having daily encounters at home, our corporate encounter would be, and it, and it does, but we have not even reached a level that we know God has called us to when it comes to encountering his presence. Why do you think the Lord has taken us down this journey? Because there's a great awakening on the other side. So he's trying to make sure. But our job is, it's good that you encounter God here, but we want you to encounter him Right at your home, right at your child. Here, I want, it ain't got to be live, it just be, I can just feel his presence. But it's funny because, I think, I don't know what class we might be a Bible study, the Holy Spirit is the most important person in the world. Yes. Yeah. But nobody ever taught us about him. So we had to learn by error. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Somebody say daily encounters. Amen. So God's intention is for us to have daily encounters with him. In my conclusion, our conclusion, let's, as we come home with this.
Go ahead, God. Let's read the scripture real quick. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Definition of the word time. Measure of time. Opportune or, or seasonable time. This, I like this. The right time. Music, guys. Definition of of is a, indicates a point of reference. It's a point of what y'all? Reference. Definition of refreshing. A cooling. Watch this, this is deep. A recovery of breath. Remember Adam was in the, the garden and they walked through the cool of the day. Ski time after you see Adam and Eve messed up. Do you ever see the word cool mentioned in the garden again, mom? Because Adam was put in a place. Look what it says. So the times of refreshing or the time of recovery or the times of cooling may be where, y'all? From the what? Presence. From the what? Presence. From the what? Presence. So you telling me that I can recover my breath in the presence of the Lord? You telling me that I can walk through the cooling of the day in yes. the presence of the Lord? Lord. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. So encountering him is not a one-time thing. It's not when you come here on Wednesdays and Sundays, but it is an everyday thing. We can encounter him just like Pastor talking about the streams. We can encounter his love one day. We can encounter his peace the other day. We can encounter his joy another day. We can encounter his strength another day. Every piece of him we can encounter every single day of our life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to be stressed out. I don't want to be down and beat up. I want to encounter the presence of the living God every single day. I want to encounter the joy of the Lord every single day in the mighty name of Jesus. Why, why is it not a one-time thing, Nikki? Because it says times. It didn't say time. It said, so now, son, that the times, mama, plural, which means there are times when he was set it up where you need a refreshing. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it's important to make sure. I mean, we first got started years ago. The Lord, I asked my wife, I said, it's prophetic. I said, what is our church like? The Lord spoke to us. He said, it's like H2O. We have somebody that we look up to, Pope, call it Mama Pope. She called and said, son, the Lord was dealing with me concerning your church, concerning your planning. I said, what is it? She said, the Lord told me to tell you that your church will be like H2O to many. So that's why we got to keep the water fresh around here. That because there's many coming from north to south, the east and the west. They got, they got hungry for gifts, but they're hungry for a refreshing. They're hungry because there's spirit, there's trap things coming that need to learn how to recover their breath. There's donkey that's coming. There's two dealers that's coming that need the refreshing, but you mean they need a recovering of the breath. See, 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 when you lose breath and you get your breath like your breath back because you have a whole new value system. Who's ever choked and you lost your breath? Yes. For that moment, yeah. you feel like life was over. Yes. But until you recover yeah. your breath, yeah. fear had crept in for a while. Yeah. Mm. So God is saying, wow. G2G, <laughs> make sure you do anything and everything to keep the water fresh. Nothing wrong with hot water. That's good sometimes. But ain't nothing like some cold, refreshing water. My mama, rest in peace, used to have a job. Mommy, your mama, so y'all used to have one too. Take the job, Miss Wendy, put some ice in it. Now she come home from hooping. I'd be like, she got what I need. <laughs> as soon as I come on the porch, I didn't even ask. Because there was a desperation for something I needed. And it was cold where it talked to me. Drink me. And as soon as you drink it, what's the thing you say? <laughs> because now your desperation 
has had an encounter with something that she needed. But what is God saying is that you know, God's time and it's refreshing go hand and hand. I'll create times when there will be a refreshing. I'll create refreshing when it will create a time. Now what if we can't discern the times of refreshing? Hmm. God has a, what it says, seasonable time when cooling is necessary. Seasonal, if you look at the root word, it says, Carl, season. Because in the wintertime, you're not really thirsty as you is in the summertime. Because summertime produces things inside of you that wants you longing for something thirsty. Watch this now. Because summertime comes, and what it does is, if you don't properly, hear me, recover your breath, if you don't properly stay what you're hydrated, with what? Water and what your liquids, that the heat will do something to your body which causes you to either fall out, either cause you to faint or cause you to have early heart attacks. Why? Because the heat overpowered the things that you needed inside of you. So what is God saying? It's seasonal because every season there's a different refreshing. You need more refreshing in the summertime than you do in the winter. You need more refreshing here in the summertime than you need in the spring. But it's seasonable. Season. What is Pastor saying this afternoon? Based off the season you're in, there's a refreshing waiting for you. I don't know what all type of season you're in this afternoon, but we're all in many different seasons today. And what am I saying? Today is the time at the end of the service, and I'm coming to tell you prophetically, there will be a refreshing we're not going to pump you. We're not going to prime you. But if you're in need of a recovery of breath, what do you mean? I've been going blow after blow. It seems like the enemy been throwing left and right and right and left. It, it, it reminds me of a person that can't swim and they drop, Pastor. You put them up under there, they're fighting. Because they got one thing. If I can just get up there to get my what, y'all? Right. Many of you have been in a war in this wild season. You've been fighting for breath. This afternoon, if you stay, there will be a refreshing. There will be a water in this place. There will be, I mean, this time has been ordained by God. There will be me, a release of the cooling. And you're going to leave this place saying, ah. why? Because it all came from the presence, where y'all? Of the Lord. As we close. There are two words going around the churches today. and It's experience versus encounter. Many times you hear pastor always talk about the encounter and that we just don't want to experience God, but we want to encounter God. And so we want to go through some things of the differences between experience and encounter. So when we experience, it's experience is a one-way response. It's where we receive, receive, receive in our experience, where the encounter is a two-way interaction, that dialogue, where we talk to him and he talks back, we talk to him and he talks back, he gives us the, the love that we need, we show it right back. The next one is experience is based on, uh, off of our past. When you have an experience, you leave saying, God most likely did something for me. So that's why his presence is supposed to be a two-way street. I do something for him, he do something for me. Also, most of our experience is based off your past. Some of you are living off past glory yeah. that you encountered a long time ago. And you're trying to live off past glory when encounters is trying to tell you something new. So because you love, and this is for somebody on Facebook, I really sense, 
God did it, didn't he, man? Man, I remember that back then. I remember that back then. I, I, everything is back then. And God is like, that was great for then. But it's not great for now. Nah. And mama, it's not great for where I'm going. Yes. So if we're going to encounter him daily, you got to move past your past experience with the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Matter of fact, when you talk about experience, it's a sign that what y'all, with your job, how you do it with your job. When you put on your job, what you put? Your past what? Experience. That means your past workflow, your past skills. So experience is based off past, while encounter is based off something new. I will do a what y'all? A new thing. Because when I come, I'm coming with refreshing. Yes. Which means I'm going to come and refresh you. Hear me. Past that experience that you had. I challenge you as we got two more. Quit living off old stuff. How God showed himself strong in 2005. That's old. Amen. God, you did it when I first got saved. It's old. God, you did it in 2000. Here, yesterday. Yes. It's old. God, you did it at 12. That's old. And God is like, no. I, will, I, I, I don't want to just be around you to have old experiences. When I come, I want it to be fresh. I want you to encounter me new every time. Well, God, you did it. You did it back then. Man, God's like, I did do it. But could you come up? I'm ready to encounter you. See, encounter... Once again, it's a two-way street. Somebody said the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. Experience is a noun <laughs> where encounter is a verb. I like that. You can experience him. Yes, that's wonderful. You can experience him because he's in the room. But encounter, it takes action. Ah, encounter, it takes you doing something in order for him to do something. Encounter, it takes him to do some action and you taking some action. Like Pastor was saying, it's new thing. Whereas the experience is things that have happened in the past and we're holding on to those things. And once we release those things, God can take action on a daily yes. basis versus on our past experience with his presence. Think about the word now. Person, place, or what? Hey. Most of us, Nikki, put our experience on a place. I experienced him there. Yeah. Yeah. I experienced that. But encounter is like, no, nah, it's passing now. It's, a, it's an action word. So what is God saying? What's he found? What is God saying, my friend? It's great that you encounter him here and there and everywhere. But don't limit to me to a place when I want to have an encounter with a person. Who is that person? It's you. Yeah. Last one. Experiences are good for moments. As soon as that moment is done, that experience leaves. But an encounter lasts forever. You ever had a moment with somebody, it just was a moment, it was good for that moment. Man, I had fun at that moment. As soon as they leave, that moment gone. You never see the person again, you never talk to them again. So God has challenged us this afternoon. Don't live off good moments. Live on something that you need count forever. See, what we're doing, we're trying to train you so when you get to heaven, you'll be used to his presence daily. Because it makes a difference. So somebody said, I'm going past good moments. I'm going past good moments. I'm going to encounter him forever. I'm going to encounter him forever. So as we come to a close, last week we said we have a desire for the presence of God. That from the desire, we will help us develop a hunger for the presence of God. And from that developing, it will push us to draw towards the presence of God. Yeah. And which the drawing will give us a dependency on the presence of God. What we want to do is add this part. It creates a desperation for the presence of God. Wealth and wealth, which causes us to have a discipline within our flesh. Knowing he wants to have a life-changing dialogue on a daily basis. And I don't know what you need. But we took the last, the last two weeks. But we know God wants to synchronize us with him. And if you say, Pastor, I'm in need of a refresher.
There's about to be a release in this place. There's about to be a diet. Maybe God won't tell you some stuff today. Maybe there's an answer that you've been asking. Today is the day today that you can get it. But if you're in need of a refreshing, and you say, out of all these eight points, I need something desired, developed, drawing, dependency, desperation, discipline. I need it all. Stand to your feet this afternoon. We're not going to thank you if you don't want to. You're absolutely great. Can you turn the music up, please? If you say, after hearing this teaching, provoked to know his presence, you can come to the altar. You can lay on the altar. However you want to do it. But his presence will be strong in this room. This is for everybody. If you say, I want it. You, you can stay in your seat. You can walk. But I just want you to open up your spirit today. I want you to open up your spirit and draw an eye to him this afternoon. Some of you want to scream. You want to yell. You want to bend. Whatever you want to do. Go after his presence. Be desperate for him today. Go a little bit deeper, come on. Come on. 
You that's for me, I don't need you to work this afternoon. I need you to have an encounter with him. You are free from working this afternoon. Go after him. 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 Come on, church. Oh God, we want you. Oh God, let your spirit be released in this room. Oh God, let your weight in this be released, God. Father God, would you do something new in this place? Would you take us past our past experience? Of would you take us deeper in the presence of the Lord? Father, would you give us discernment? Let us know what's real and what's fake. Yes. Father, we don't want another gift. Lord, we try it out for your presence. Yes. Come on, church. Come on. I hear a welling in the spirit. Come on. I hear a welling in the spirit. Come on. I hear a welling in the spirit. I hear a welling in the spirit. I hear a welling in the spirit. Come on. Increase our desire for your presence, Jesus. Increase our desire for your goodness, Jesus. Increase our desire for you, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Increase our passion for your presence, oh God. Increase our longing for your presence, oh God. We long for you in this place. We long for your glory, Jesus. We long for the one-on-one -on -one with you, God. Speak to us in a dialogue. Speak to your friends. Yeah. 
Here we go, church. Come on, we're almost there. We're almost there. Time to refresh me. Come on, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Time to refresh me. Refresh our spirit, Lord. Time to refresh me. Father, we try. We need time to refresh me. Come on. Go a little deeper. Time to refresh you. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Time to refresh you. Yes, come on.
As we go on, this is a tale of the moon. Daily encounters. Come on, we just sing it a couple of minutes. Come on, sing it. Daily encounters. Come on, let's prophesy. Come on. Daily encounters. I desire this afternoon that this teaching provokes your hunger in some way, some shape, or some form. We're praying that you will have the gift of discernment, that you may know when it's Him. Nothing wrong with gifts, nothing wrong with all that type of things. But whenever a gift outweighs the presence, we're in trouble. This my wife and I mandate what is this church is to get us back hosting his presence correctly. There were some things that God spoke to you in your dialogue session today. And there'll be some more future things as we teach you how to hear the voice or hear the voice better or whatever it is. We charge you after this two-week sermon, no matter how high God takes you, no matter the doors that he opens, no matter the places that you go, always remember the necessity and the importance of synchronizing with him. And you all have been on the computer before, and there's a button in the corner when you have to refresh. That same sign is a synchronizing sign, which means the page synchronize all at once. And I just challenge you, if you can't get to your church, create an environment at home. The times of refreshing will be released for you. I charge you, let this be the year where you desire him. Let this be the year where you develop another home. Let this be the year where you draw towards him like you've never had before. Let this be the year that we'll be desperate on our jobs, on our gifts, and all of that. But we'll be desperate as Moses was on his presence. Let this be the year where this desperation goes to no another level. Let this be the year where we all discipline our flesh. Let this be the year where this was the greatest dialogue with God we have ever had. 
that this be the year, the remaining days of 2018. Let us have new encounters with the presence of the Lord. His presence is absolutely valuable. He's a great church. He's a great God. We're just going to leave the offerings at the bowl, up in the front. And I'm not going to rush you out of your encounter. I'm not going to make you leave. But if you have to go, we'll see you Wednesday. Have a phenomenal week. So today, if it's your ties and offering week, continue to be faithful in that. And now we bless that you sow it, sow it to the word today. So we may sow 20. I don't know what God is saying to do today. So we can have the, the offering. You're right in the middle. And uh, you don't have to get up. You can stay right where you are. Just enjoy the authentic presence of the Lord. So you need an offering envelope. There's offering envelopes behind every pew. Now, nobody's going to rush you up. You are released to come drop your seat in the ground. Thank you in advance. Father, cover every person today. No backlash against no one today. But watch over them in the name of Jesus. Lord, let this start something new in our homes and our lives. So we're not living off past encounters, past experiences, but we're living off fresh new encounters. Thank you for what you got planned for every person. Watch over them in the name of the Lord. You are dismissed unless you just want to bask in his presence. Choice if you can turn the lights down just a little more, Lord, so. Hey, who know God may want to speak to you? Amen. 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 Amen.
God in a major way. Yes. Today was absolutely uh, an encounter. So we pray as we dealt with eight steps over the last two weeks, that you would have a desire for the presence of God, that you would begin to develop and hunger for the presence of God, and that out of that developing, that you will begin to draw towards Him. And out of that, you will create a dependency on the presence of the Lord. And out of that dependency, there should become a desperation for the presence of the Lord. And out of that, man, we should be disciplined and discipline our flesh yes. that we may encounter the presence of the Lord. And out of all of that, he comes with his presence so that me and you and him can have absolutely phenomenal dialogue. The scripture says he'll tell you some things that you can't even search out. But I want to tell you this, that the presence of God is available to be encountered every single day. So if you didn't get a chance to watch the old service, go back, watch both of them. I think it was some life-changing tools and some keys that can unlock heaven in your home. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to see you this Wednesday. We got Bible study, Sunday. Got some great things happening. That God is doing a lot of things behind the scenes. In God's timing, we're going to release a lot of things. But just continue praying for us as we pray for you. Yes. And it's our desire that you synchronize with Him. God bless. We'll see you. Peace.